Thus far, we focused our attention of power series on geometric series. Everything relates to a geometric series and can be written in the form of a geometric series. But that's actually not the case. In fact, most functions cannot be written in the form of a geometric series. So the question that we're going to try and address today is how do we find a power series for other functions? And the answer to that is what are called a Taylor series and McLaren series. And Taylor and McLaren developed these processes independent of each other, and there's a slight difference between the two of them. Taylor's is probably the most well-known because it's the most versatile. Taylor said a series for a function at the point A is the function at A plus the first derivative at A divided by 1 factorial times x minus A to the first power plus the second derivative at A over 2 factorial times x minus a to the second power plus the third derivative, and we'll just put a little 3, at a divided by 3 factorial times x minus a to the third power, and so on and so forth. Ultimately, we're adding the nth derivative at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the nth power on and on and on to infinity. In other words, it is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n. This is what is called a Taylor series. Now, McLaren wasn't quite as versatile when he came up with uh, his version of this same result. Um, McLaren said basically the same thing, a series at, but McLaren kept it at a equals 0 and didn't expand it to any a. So if we plug 0 in for all the a's, we basically get what's called a McLaren series, which is f of 0 plus the first derivative at 0 divided by 1 factorial times x to the first, plus the second derivative at 0 divided by 2 factorial times x to the second, plus the third derivative at 0 divided by 3 factorial times x to the third, and so on and so forth. And so what you see is we're ultimately taking the nth derivative at 0, dividing by n factorial times x to the n, and we keep going all the way up to infinity. In other words, it can be summarized as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of f to the n at 0, divided by n factorial times x to the n and we get a McLaren series. And really, a McLaren series is a special case of the Taylor series because it's just when a equals 0. Turns out the algebra is a lot nicer when a is 0 for a McLaren series. But the process is exactly the same. The idea is if we can identify the generic form of all of the derivatives at the point, we can write it as a McLaren or Taylor series. Let's take a look at how we can write any function as a power series. We're going to find either the, well, let's start with McLaren, actually. Let's start with the McLaren series. Sometimes they're called McLaren polynomials. 
A McLaren polynomial is not infinite. It stops at a certain point. But if we make it into a series going all the way to infinity, we can find a McLaren series, for example, for f of x equals e to the x. And so we're going to start to look for a pattern that's going to occur with the derivatives. So f of x, well, actually, let's start with f of x. We know f of x is e to the x. The first derivative is also e to the x. The second derivative is also e to the x. And so we can see pretty quick that any derivative is just e to the x. And since this is a McLaren series, we're actually going to plug 0 into all of these. Well, e to the 0 is 1. The first derivative at 0 is also 1. The second derivative at 0 is also 1. And so on and so forth, we see that any derivative at 0 is e to the 0, which is equal to 1. So we can build this McLaren series by saying, OK, e to the x is equal to first the function at 0, which is 1, plus the first derivative, which is 1, over 1 factorial times x to the first, plus the second derivative, which is 1, over 2 factorial times x squared, plus, and so on, continuing with this pattern until we have the nth derivative, which is 1, over n factorial times x to that n power, and so on. Well, if we've seen this pattern building, Essentially, we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of all of the x to the n's divided by n factorial. This series, then, is equal to the e to the x function. In fact, in certain contexts, as we continue our study of mathematics, it's more convenient, instead of working with e to the x, to work with the power series the sum of x to the n over n factorial. This one wasn't too interesting, though, because all of the 0 points ended up being equal to 1. So let's see if we can find a McLaren series for something a little more interesting. How about f of x equals the sine of x? Well, if we start building our derivatives, f of x is the sine of x. f prime, the derivative of sine is cosine. The second derivative is negative sine. The third derivative is negative cosine. And the fourth derivative then becomes positive sine. And so we're starting to cycle back through sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. OK, let's plug 0 in, because that's what McLaren wants us to do. The sine of 0 is equal to 0. The first derivative at 0 is the cosine of 0, which is 1. The second derivative at 0 is the negative sine. Well, negative sine of 0 is 0. The third derivative at 0 is negative cosine, which is 1, so negative 1. And then the fourth derivative at 0 is going to start to cycle back through our answers. And so we end up with coefficients of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, which means all of the odd terms, the first term, the third term, the fifth term, and so on, are all going to be 0 because we're multiplying by that derivative. So we don't really have any odd terms. The first term is 0, or the 0th term is 0. And now for the first term, we'll take x to the first power divided by 1 factorial times the derivative of 1. The second derivative is 0, so we have 0. When we do the third derivatives, the third derivative is negative 1 times x to the third over that 3 factorial. The fourth derivative is 0, but the fifth goes back to 
x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Then we're going to do minus. And you start to see the pattern forming. The sixth power goes to 0, but the seventh power is negative x to the seventh over 7 factorial, and so on. So we need a way to represent this pattern so we can convert it into a series. Well, one thing that I notice is we are alternating positive, negative, positive, negative. So we've got a negative 1 to the n to give us that alternating series. Notice when n is 1, actually, we are going to start at 0. So when n is 0, negative 1 to the 0 is a positive 1, which matches our first term. So that's good. Then we've got x raised to an exponent. But the exponents on x are all the odd numbers. So we can't just say n. What we can say, though, if 2n is the odd numbers, 2n plus 1, I'm sorry, 2n is the even numbers, adding 1, 2n plus 1 becomes all the odd numbers. So as you can see, when n is 0, the first term has x to the first. When n is 1, Plugging 1 in, we end up with x to the third. When n is 2, the second term, remember that we're starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, we end up with 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. So those exponents work out. And we're dividing by that same exponent, 2n plus 1 factorial. And that's going to continue forever as we end up taking the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of that exact thing we just found, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. This is our McLaren series, our power series, that is exactly the same as the sine of x. I want to take a look at this on Desmos, because I really think this is amazing when you see the graph work out. OK, what I've done on here is I've graphed sine of x. We know sine of x starting at 0, going up and down, period of 2 pi, uh, amplitude of 1. That's, that's not very exciting. But what we've just found out is that the McLaren series, which starts with x over 1 factorial, and then it's going to be alternating with the odd exponents, should be exactly the same as this graph. And this is really neat to watch it build. When we subtract x cubed over 3 factorial, it starts to bend with the graph. Then we add x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and it continues to bend with the graph. Subtract x to the seventh over 7 factorial, and it gets even better. Add x to the ninth over 9 factorial, and it gets even better. And if we keep going, we're going to get more and more of the graph building up as it stretches out and out. And eventually, when you get to an infinite number of terms, you've got the entire sine x curve from this power series. So what we've done is we've changed the sine of x into a polynomial. Polynomials are much easier to work with as we get to more complex operations. So that's how we can build a McLaren series. We find all the derivatives. We plug 0 into all the derivatives. And we look for patterns in this McLaren series format, where we're taking the first term, then times x over 1 factorial, times x squared over 2 factorial, times x cubed over 3 factorial, all the way up. And ultimately, we're just trying to find that generic form so that we can change it into a series. That's McLaren. Let's take a look at Taylor, because Taylor is a little bit more versatile. We're going to find some Taylor polynomials. And series. A polynomial is finite, a certain number of terms. A series goes off to infinity. And we're going to start simply with f of x equals 1 over x. And we're going to find this ta Taylor series at a equals 1. We're going to plug 1 into all the derivatives. And then we're going to have x minus 1 squared, cubed, fourth power, fifth power, and so on. 
So first, f of x, our function, is 1 over x. Or let's actually write it as x to the negative 1. We can convert it so that we can see what it is. Our first derivative, then, is negative x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. Our second derivative is positive 2x to the negative 3, so 2 over x cubed. And our third derivative, um, notice if we pull the negative 3 out, we end up with negative 3 times 2 times x to the negative 4, or negative 3 times 2 over x to the fourth. And the reason I write it like that is you can sort of start to see a factorial forming in this numerator. You can see next time it's going to be 4 times 3 times 2, then 5 times three, 4 times 3 times 2. It's going to count down. So we're ending up with those factorials in the numerator. That's going to be really helpful to us as we come up with a generic form. All right, we're doing it at 1. So we're going to plug 1 into each of these. 1 divided by 1 is 1. The derivative at 1 is negative 1 over 1, which is 1. The second derivative at 1, well, the denominator is just 1, so we end up with 2. The third derivative at 1 gives us negative 3 times 2. And you can kind of see we're building towards the nth derivative at 1 is going to have an n factorial, as we said. Next time, it's going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We just have to worry about the fact that it's an alternating series. We want it to start out positive on the 0th term, on the 0th derivative. So we'll just do the n power. And in much the same way, we can use the Taylor formula to start building then that 1 over x is equal to, and let's see if we can jump right to the generic form. The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the derivative pattern. Notice our derivative pattern was negative 1 to the n times n factorial. Then we divide by an n factorial times x minus our a, which is 1, raised to the n power. But this one's really interesting because the n factorials actually divide out. So what we really have is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n power. And we have ended up with a power series that is equal to the function 1 over x. Let's try one more. Finding another Taylor series. We did cosine last time. Let's do, I'm sorry, we did sine last time. Let's do cosine this time. And let's do it at a is equal to pi. Pi is a nice number to stick into cosine. And so in much the same way, we're going to run through the derivatives. The 0th derivative is cosine x. That's the regular function. First derivative is negative sine x. Second derivative is negative cosine x. The third derivative is positive sine x. And the fourth derivative, we start to see it cycling back to cosine. This time, because it's a Taylor series, though, we're not plugging 0 in. We're plugging pi in. Well, the cosine at pi is negative 1. Negative sine at pi, the first derivative is 0. The second derivative, negative cosine. Well, cosine at pi is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. And then the third derivative at pi is also 0. And then you can start to see at the fourth derivative, it's going to start to cycle around. Might be a little trickier to see the pattern of the derivatives off the bat here. So we're going to go ahead and build a couple terms and see if that helps us see the pattern. The first term is, or the 0th term, I should say, is negative 1. So cosine x equals negative 1. Then our first derivative, 
is going to be a 0, so that all goes to 0. For the second derivative, we end up with 1 times the x minus pi to the second power divided by 2 factorial, then a 0, then another negative 1, x minus pi. This is now the fourth derivative, fourth power divided by 4 factorial. And you start to see the pattern. This time, it's the even exponents times x minus pi. The next one's going to be to the sixth power over 6 factorial, and so on. So can we come up with a generic formula? Well, it's an alternating series. But this time, the first term is negative. So we need to stagger. Negative 1 to the n will make the first term positive. Negative 1 to the 0 is positive 1. So if we do n plus 1, that'll stagger us by 1. And then all we have left is the x minus pi to the, ooh, what power now? This time, we ended up with the 0th term, the 2nd term, the 4th term, the 6th term. This time, we have the even exponents, the even terms. So to get even numbers, we'll do 2 times n, and we'll divide by that 2n factorial as it keeps going. So what we end up with is that the cosine of x is really equal to the Taylor series as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x minus pi to the 2n over the 2n factorial. We should have that 2n in parentheses. And this one is centered at pi because we did at pi at a equals pi. What does that mean, centered at pi, as opposed to the McLaren series, which was centered at 0? Well, let's go back to the graph to discuss that. Notice when we started to build the sine of x as a McLaren series, it was centered at 0. And if I start deleting these terms off, you see ultimately where the function started building was from the center of 0. But if I do a cosine x, I have to move the graph over a bit. And now if I start building negative 1 plus x minus pi squared over 2, you start to see where it's building is right at pi. If I do x equals pi and put a line here, that's the center. And now if I go minus x minus pi to the fourth power over 4 factorial, that 2 should be factorial as well, but that doesn't really make a difference. You see it's starting to build that cosine, but it starts building from the center of pi. And if we keep going, we'll get closer and closer to the actual function over 8 factorial. And we've almost got a full period now. And if we keep going off to infinity, you can see how we'd end up eventually with the entire graph forming from a center of pi. So Taylor allows us to start building the graph from any point. McLaren always builds the graph from 0. But let's take, give you a chance to look at the homework assignment, try and build some of these Taylor and McLaren series, get comfortable with what they are and how they work. And then we will see you in class to discuss them more.